Welcome to VNews Special Report. I'm Phil Gallagher, and my guest today is a very familiar face around town, Joe Brown of Joe Brown Digital Photography, who is celebrating his 30th anniversary in business. 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> my, how time flies. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I can remember when you were a Cub photographer, there you go. right? I remember you. You were one of the first people I met. So <laughs> cub the, cub politician. Yeah, back cub back politician. The, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> so. Exactly. So let's start from the beginning. First of all, how'd you learn to be a photographer? From the beginning. Wow. Um, so it happened in the sixth grade at the Alta Vesta School in Woburn. So I'm, I'm a Woburn, born and born and raised Woburn. Um, well, so was Burlington, and, you know. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I actually used to go to the school at the Tarkey uh, School on the west side. But once a week, I went to the Alta Vesta, and there was a teacher there. Well, I'll never forget. You know, they say one teacher can make a world of difference. Well, this guy did. And here is my very first camera. It is a Polaroid that he actually handed to me and said, "Take it apart." write a report, tell me all about photography, you got a week, go. And then he <laughs> handed me this camera, and I still have it, I still use it, you can still get Polaroid film. And uh, that was the great start of what has been a lifelong passion, commitment, uh, and fun. I uh, love this. Great. Well, long. you've been around. Uh, so. uh, what, what, what's a freelance photographer, for instance? So, Explain that to us. Well, basically, I work for anybody with a checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> is really the way that works. <laughs> Pretty broad um, description. Well, it is because I'm kind of a I'm a generalist. I don't mm -hmm. specialize in any one type of photography. Mm -hmm. So we all know I do the newspaper stuff. I do a lot of sports, high school sports, some mm -hmm. college sports every now and again. Mm -hmm. But then I'll get a call from a, a corporation here in Burlington that says we need a, a headshot of an of an executive. Mm -hmm. I'll get a call from the local temple saying uh, there's a bar mitzvah. Um, I've done uh, all kinds of uh, uh, Navy trips. We've done a bunch of that stuff. I guess that falls more on the news. Mm -hmm. I've been on submarines. I've been on aircraft carriers. I've done all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a really a general, broad-based photography. So you can get a it's wedding here now and then? Every now and then. I, do, I probably do three or between three and five a year. Mm -hmm. I don't advertise it, though. There's people out there that that's what they do right. for a living. Um, I just enjoy them for friends and relatives and... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that's all. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, I'm really happy, as I tell people, I love to chase ambulances, not so much brides. Mm -hmm. So right. it's one of those, right. you know. Right. Um, but I'll do weddings. If somebody needs a wedding photographer, uh, I, I like to think I do them in the journalistic kind of style, mm -hmm. which is a lot of candidates, not, a, not as many posed photos. Right. Um, right. But it's a lot of fun. I just, so you I do crime it. and you do sensationalist I stuff. Do. Uh, uh, how do you do that? Have you got a police rec scanner the in your car? The scanner. Um, Twitter has been my, is, a, is a huge part of my business at Facebook. I get really? notified a lot of lot of notifications on Twitter about things that are going on. Mm -hmm. um, online now, from departments are good. Are the departments the, sending well, out the departments do some of them. Mm -hmm. um, mostly, mm -hmm. it's what I'm hearing from other people, fire buffs or mm -hmm. sparks, as they're called. Right, right. Um, and uh, we'll throw a plug out for Alfay. He'll call me every now and again and say, <laughs> uh, you know, there's this going on, or he'll call me and say, make sure you have a truck day, or you know, right. he'll give me a lot of stuff. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's 30 years of networking. I, I, I like to think that I've been pretty good to the communities, and these guys, they, they take good yeah. care of me. They mm -hmm. really do. Right. I know I don't cover just Burlington. I do Woburn. I do Wilmington. I do Tuxbury. I do Winchester. I do Reading and Stoneham. That's mm -hmm. basically the Daily Times coverage area. Right. But as a freelancer, I also work for the Lowell Sun on occasion. So I cover all of that area up, up north mm -hmm. of us. Um, most recently, I've been working for the Lawrence Eagle Tribune, and they've had me at the Salem News. So I've been covering Salem, Marblehead, Essex, um, that kind of area. Mm -hmm. So, it, so um, you you've got a you got a network of people that are in the business. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then whoever needs me can call. They can text. They can, if they have a special assignment. Most of the time, it's individual assignment work. I'll get called for a specific game. It won't be can you work for us for eight hours? Mm -hmm. Can you work a day? But that has happened before, where the newspapers have called and said, "We have people on vacation. Can you cover one of their shifts?" Mm -hmm. So a shift is basically an eight-hour shift. Right. So, right. and that could be wherever. And I like to drive. I don't mind, you know, and I love what I do. Okay. So, so passion is one thing, but a gig is altogether another thing. Absolutely. So, so how do you turn p uh, passion into a gig? Um, that was something 30 years ago that just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when I first came on board with the Daily Times, they said, understand that you're not a staff person. You're a freelancer. And I said, what the heck is that? <laughs> and A stringer um, in the old days. A stringer, right? yeah, still, stringer. still a stringer. Sure. And uh, in and, and the first few years, um, the photography was great, but I didn't do so well with the business part of it. And mm -hmm. I had to go back and actually had to have tax refunds, tax returns redone because I had done them wrong. Mm -hmm. As a, and a, the, that, was the, that was the hardest part was the, the accounting part of it and generating invoices. That, that wasn't what I learned. I right. learned self-taught a photographer. Right. 
Right. It wasn't, and when, like I say, when this whole thing set, happened in 87, it was like, oh, wow. Accounts this payable is, and accounts and, receivable wasn't your gig. Well, exactly. Know, and, and truthfully, I was still living home with mom and dad. I didn't have <laughs> bills, you know, I, I mean, I had, a, I had a car and maybe the car insurance, but really didn't have anything else. Mm -hmm. And I had been working full time down at, um, well, it was called Hunt Drug back in the day because they called it a drugstore so they could stay open on Sundays and sell cameras. Mm -hmm. And that was when the blue laws said that they could not, not stay open. open. Right. So they had a pharmacy in there. And as long as the pharmacy was open, the store could, could stay open. open on a Sunday. So that's why they did that. And then as the laws changed, as we know the blue laws are different now, um, they can be open as a camera store. So I was working there, and our illustrious friend Rick Carwan came in. Former president and, uh, of BCAP. Former president of BCAP. Right? Very, yeah. very, very good here, and uh, uh, a great friend to all of us in Burlington. A well-known yeah. name, fantastic photographer, good friend to a lot of people. But uh, he really came in and said, hey, I'm looking for somebody in the Woodburn, Burlington area. And really, just like that, just like that, real kind of casual. There were a lot of us working that day. And uh, I said, oh, I live in Woodburn. And he said, okay, can you work for the newspaper? Can you do some stuff? I said, sure. So he gave me my first assignment. It was a planning board meeting back on a Thursday night in fall of 87. I don't know if it was early October, late October. It was right in this area. Had to be a Thursday night. And it had to be a Thursday that. night. <laughs> exactly. I think they still do Thursday night. They right? do. They still do they Thursday still night. Do, right. And uh, it was the installation of a new planning director, as I recall, but that's one of those things that, that, that <laughs> I don't completely remember what it was. Um, but I had the pictures the following Monday. They were in the paper. And that was my first newspaper assignment. Really? And I stayed at, uh, stayed at Hunts for another six months or so. And, but as the months went by, there were a couple of retirements at the Daily Times, and they said, can you do more and more for us? So I left Hunts and mm -hmm. went full-time as a freelancer. Jumped in with both feet. both feet. And again, I was living at home. I didn't have a lot of bills to pay. Right. So, so you could build a, a foundation. So I could build the foundation, yeah. Sure, sure. And Rick overhead. really, Rick was one of my mentors. Rick was definitely, yeah. uh, showed me how to do photography. Uh, we were in the dark room back then, so it was a lot different. Yeah. There, was, there was no digital anything well, hold on to that now. Don't, back don't, in 87. So, don't jump ahead of my script um, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Rick was great. Yeah. Rick, Rick so was fantastic. Who else? Who were some of the other memorable people uh, you started with in the business? I know you started with Peter Kent. Peter was Kent your editor yep, at the time. was the editor yeah. at the time. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy, Rick Pearl, was the sports editor. Oh, yeah, sure. And, uh, we, did a lot of, we did a lot of assignments. My first visit to Fenway Park was with Rick, and I still have the picture on my wall of me in the dugout on the telephone. They have a dugout phone yeah, that cool. goes back to the clubhouse. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, and yeah. out to the bullpen, so, right? And out to the yeah. bullpen, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, had a, we had a tour of, of Fenway, and that was back again in probably the spring of 88, uh, I think it was. So that was good. Yeah. John White was, uh, was, John uh, was, was here there. for many years. And Steve DeMarco were the Burlington editors. Right. And, and the whole Haggerty family. They've been wonderful right. to me. Right. Wonderful, wonderful people, wonderful family. Um, yeah. Ironically, we got a, we had all played hockey together as you know, mites, juniors, uh, bantams, all that. So I knew yeah. the Haggerty family. Right. Um, right. Just didn't know I was ever going to do this. Do My actual high school dream was to go to the Coast Guard Academy, and um, as stupid as this sounds, I got accepted, but I didn't pass the eyesight exam, yeah. and I was disqualified for medical reasons. So I never went to the Coast Guard Academy. That was my dream, but I took up my second love, which required my eyes anyway, right. which is photography. Right. Isn't that strange? So that's what I'm saying. Weird. It's one of those weird. Yeah. Well, uh, you, well, you didn't have flat feet, so you know, I mean that was right, yeah, that's right. what they. Yeah, used no, to. it was totally yeah, my un totally my uncorrected right. vision. They said right. if you're on the deck of a pitching boat and you lose your glasses, you're useless to us. Right. That's right. what the problem was. I Particularly a look out the forecastle. And, exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. And they didn't have um, LASIK and stuff back then. You couldn't go and get. I'm 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 uh, nearsighted. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't go and get that corrected right. back in right. 87, 80, yeah. well, actually, uh, 83 when I went uh, graduated yeah. from high school. So if you're looking for so. boats out a mile away in the fog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, so, that's bad news. But, uh, you know, they say, right, life make, gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So that's what I did. And, sure. I, and I, I've been very lucky here in my life. Well, I noticed it used to be Joe Brown photography, but now it's Joe Brown digital photography. Oh, absolutely. So let's talk about the changes that, uh, that transitioned in the technology of it. Right. So you're starting your, well, tell us the story about the darkroom being at home. Well, that's, that's what I work. would do is uh, the Daily Times, uh, at the time they were on 25 Montvale Ave, right in downtown Woburn. Sure, right. And we had a darkroom there. It was small, it wasn't the biggest place, but that's okay. And uh, you'd, I'd, you'd work a 10 hour day, say, or even an eight hour day, you'd go do, you know, maybe a ribbon cutting in the morning and a basketball game in the evening and maybe a car accident or a news type of thing mm -hmm. in, during the day. And then I'd go home and have dinner um, or whatever, or out with a girlfriend or whatever, and then back to the dark room for five or six hours. You had to soup your film. That always took at least 30 minutes to get mm -hmm. it developed. Mm -hmm. 
then it had to dry in the dryer, which is another 10, and then you'd have to print whatever pictures When you mean soup you, the film, you had to put it in that... All uh, the chemicals, chemicals, all of the... Yeah, yeah right. you'd, have to, you'd have to mix your chemicals, mm -hmm. and then we had stainless steel um, tubes that you'd put one, two, three, or four rolls in at a time. If you had more than four rolls, you had to do multiple tubes. And this would and soak in the solution in the tube? It would soak in the solution, and it was all preordained by temperature and time and... and uh, uh, so then, you just didn't throw it in a vat and pull it out and you had oh, a Oh, no, no, no. Picture. There was actually a very specific way of doing it. Right. Very specific. Right. And then uh, uh, you'd dry it. There was, there was actually like a hair dryer that had a long tube on it. You'd put them up in the tube, close it, and you'd turn it on. Mm -hmm. And that would run for almost an hour to dry them. If you were really on deadline, you could print them wet. And that took a little bit of doing because they'd mm -hmm. scratch very easily. You could tear the emulsion right off the film. Um, so, you know, putting it in the enlarger. So there's another word, enlarger. We don't. Yeah, <laughs> I have friends who actually still do um, darkroom for black and white. It's very easy. And color has actually come a long way too. Right. Well, but, it's, uh, well, we well, were all black and white back then. There was well, no. Tell color. us how it's affected so, your home life now. You know. So yeah, now we we come forward to 1999. Bought the first camera as a digital camera. or Got the first camera. Um, 2001 bought my first official digital camera, and it was always uh, memorable because it had a huge battery pack. And when you turn the camera up and down, the battery pack would fall out. And I'd always be whacking my toes yeah, with this right, brick of right, right. But uh, we had, uh, it was a lot of fun, and it made life a lot easier. Because now all of a sudden, you needed a computer, and Photoshop was in its infancy. People didn't know what that was. Right. Um, it allowed me to stay home and be a dad. Uh, so uh, this is my 25th wedding anniversary. just happened last weekend. And, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And it was funny that so when we had kids, I've got three kids, and my oldest is 22, so I'd be able to keep him with me in a crib next to me processing the pictures. So I'd be out all day taking pictures. Get my, to be a my dad wife at worked night. at nights. Yeah. My wife worked as a nurse at Winchester Hospital at nights back then, so she'd be out working at nights, and I'd be home with with the kids, kid or kids as we as we move forward. But be able to do the pictures, send them into the paper either by email or what they call as FTP file transfer. Mm -hmm. um, and then just go from there. It was it made a big difference. It really did. Now you didn't have to cut them into the print, into the copy, right? Nope, you I could just email you, them in. You just email yeah. them in. Now, what yep. about the advent of color? Well, you were around. Uh, I can remember way back. So, we saw my first color picture in the yep. uh, in the Globe. That had, did that right. predate your? Uh, that your not so much. We the Daily Times went to color in probably the middle two thousands. I want to say. And what we would do is if we knew it was going to be a color assignment, and this was, it was kind of weird. We went from just the black and whites, then we went to slide film. And what you do is you, they had a scanner for the slides. Mm -hmm. And we, that only lasted probably six months or so. And then we went to color film. And what I would do is I would run down to the guy in Woburn or Winchester and just get the negatives done. I wouldn't get the film printed. And then we would scan individual pictures in from the color negatives. Mm -hmm. This was before we actually had the digital cameras, too. So there was kind of a, a weird, because uh, <laughs> they had scanners, but they didn't have the cameras. Right. So you could still scan stuff in. This was all new, this was all new ground. Well, this must have had you know? a huge impact in, and, the in the press room, too. And it did, right? too, yeah, because they had to start. They, the, it was the whole back end of it was different. Right. They had a lot of different changes and stuff that had to be done. Right. And the times kept up with that. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, and the, the, I think really it was the advertisers demanding color, either spot color on one page, you'd get one picture on one page, or wraparound color, what was on you know, front and back or whatever. Mm -hmm. so now what about the technology in your cameras? I know you've, you've come a long way I've come from, a long way from, from this. Polaroid. Um, uh, the, the technology, it's just, we could do a whole show just on the technology. On it's the been pixels, fantastic. is that on, the biggest on, change on the, in the memory? The pixels, the memory cards, everything has changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nowadays, I tell people when they, that people come to me and say, Joe, what's the best camera to buy? And I say, there is no best camera. They all do the same thing. Everything is computer-aided design. Com the glass is unbelievable. It all comes from a lot of the same factories. Right. Nowadays, the, the, the factor is when you buy a camera is, A, do you want to invest in a system? So Nikon, Canon, Sony, the system. When you're buying the camera, you're not just buying the camera. You're buying lenses. You're buying flashes. You're buying particular memory cards. Mm -hmm. Or how does it feel in your hand is the second factor. So if you say, okay, I want to go Nikon, and you go to the store and you pick up that Nikon, and you go, wow, that really doesn't feel right. I just, I'm not happy with how, the, most of it is the depth of the grip, is right. how deep it is. So now you say to the guy behind the counter, and I, I tell everybody, it's great to order online, don't get me wrong, but go to the store and actually pick them up at first. Hold them before you actually make mm -hmm. that order. And then, uh, so you might go to Canon, and you might say, wow, that Canon feels a lot better. But let me try that Sony. All right, go to Sony. Wow, hey, that's it, that's my Sony. Right. 
So now you've decided on a system. Right. Now, when and you say a system outside of the the hardware of the system, do they do you download into a system? I mean, would you download whatever computer, into the whatever computer you have? Okay. Uh, you can do it wirelessly. You can do it uh, just by. Uh, truthfully, I still like the old-fashioned, uh, quote-unquote, old-fashioned way. So I take the memory card out of the camera. I have a slot on my computer. I put it in, okay. and then I go get a cup of coffee because it yeah. automatically. I have it. I have it set up. And again, because I'm, you know, that's just the way I do things. Um, everything automatically downloads to a pre-set up, yeah, right. in what we call import folder. So you've so got tens of thousands of pictures at this point. Tens of thousands. And this import system enables you to reference that library how. Uh, but by date, as, as we were talking earlier, mm -hmm. um, if somebody calls and says, I'm looking for a picture from um, right now, like I say, 1992 forward is all live. I can get any photo that I took from 1992 just by knowing the date or even just roughly the date. I don't have to know the exact date because of search engines mm -hmm. that are local. I have a form of a Google search engine on my home computer that will go through all of my uh, archives. Uh -huh. And I can just put in a keyword. So that's the important thing if you're storing everything is to put a keyword on it. So for me, obviously, so I'm looking for a basketball game, I'm going to put Woburn versus Burlington Boys Basketball no, or Boys Varsity up. Basketball. That will be that folder name. Mm -hmm. So then when I go back 10 years later and they say, say, remember that game back in 2002 and I played that game? I've had this actually happen where the kids have graduated, long graduated college. They're having their families. They have it, and they, they have that memory of, wow, Joe caught that picture of me scoring the winning touchdown back on Thanksgiving. Let me call them and find out if that picture is still available. And I'll say, well, what year? You know, Thanksgiving, what year? That's an easy one. I can find those in, in a heartbeat. So I can, get that, but, I can get that copy in two minutes so, once yeah, you find it, right? As opposed to the negatives, which are all in boxes in the garage. Now, they're all filed, but I'd have to, it would take hours to go well, through Well, these are the early the, the negatives prior to two. Prior to two, right. Prior to about 1990. There was a transition period, 1999, 2000, negatives, slides, and, and, you know, but those are all filed and boxed. Okay, in, now in what do you garage. do with your archive? I mean, oh. I presume you're in the cloud or you have a, another terabyte. Everything uh, is, yeah. So I got the website. Yeah. is a way to store the full resolution of the photo. So all the sports stuff goes up to my website and then anything that um, parents will request. Because I'll get that request of, hey, you went to the Pine Glen and you get the, the kids parading around for Halloween. So, so your full archive is on your website in a remote server? Virginia somewhere, yeah. Really? Yeah. So I you pay for that service every month. You so do? They, yeah. And yep. they, they have redundancies they in terms of... They have complete redundancies, yeah. Okay, yep. and they're responsible. So there's no way Joe Brown can lose Joe Brown. No, no. It's it not unbelievable. Right. <laughs> um, they're also backed up on uh, DVDs. I use DVDs as storage medium, not mm -hmm. so much. Everybody thinks, oh, DVD's a movie. Right. No. no, but I back story. everything up on the DVDs, yeah. and those stay with my father who lives down the Cape. Really? So, yeah. And how much storage do you think you're using right now? Uh, Roughly. Petabytes. <laughs> Petabytes. <laughs> Petabytes, really yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. just huge. It's hard to even uh, imagine. Because yeah. um, a JPEG, it's, it's a JPEG file, right? But I also shoot some raw stuff, so that's a little bit different. The raw file is a little bit bigger and contains more data, so mm -hmm. those are harder to store. Okay. Now you're in the drone photography business. Now I do business. some drone stuff, yep. Okay. How yep. is that working out? First of all, as a business line, uh, and secondly, what did it take for you to become not only a photographer but a pilot? Um, Really just the interest in doing it, uh -huh. seeing some of my friends. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not fully commercial yet because I don't have my license. Uh -huh. So um, Now, does a license enable you to go above 400 feet? No. 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 All the license allows up. you to do is be commercial. Uh -huh. It allows you to sell. I see. But they want to know yeah. that if you're going to put yourself out there as a professional, the FAA wants to know that you are going to be that professional and right. you are going to take the license exam. It's 70 questions. you got to get a 70 on it to get your license. It's called an FAA Part 107 license. Uh -huh. And all it really is is do you know how to read a, an aero chart. So if you are out somewhere and you don't know if you're close to an airport and you call up a, an aero chart on your, or it's a map basically, right, right. on your computer, your phone, whatever, can you read that? Do you know how far away from you are? And you, you know can what bring that up on your are. controller, right? That's I can bring it up right. on my controller, or on my, and, and I use my phone. For my uh -huh. particular drone, I use my, my, my iPhone. Uh -huh. But I could use a bigger iPad if I want to, or even a bigger tablet. Right. So. Right. Um, so I've been mostly practice flying now. I do have a, a couple of videos on YouTube, um, right. but they're, uh, they're fun. They're, not, they're nothing that I'm going to win any awards, awards for, for. Yeah. but it was a learning experience. I, I never learned um, video editing, so... I may be coming here to yeah, take yeah. some video editing classes. <laughs> well, we can do that. We can do that. Yeah, I've yeah. already been told yeah. that uh, Tad yeah. and the guys will do that for me. Yeah. Um, 
it's just a lot of fun. And you know, the other thing is, it's kind of funny is, uh, and you know me, I'm so shy. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, conversation starter. Yeah. Right. When I fly that drone, wherever I am, it doesn't matter. I'll have people come over and say, hey, what's is that? that? What? Yeah, yeah. Really? Is that? Um, well, we're in the drone. We, we, we just yeah, got right, one you a couple guys, yeah, months right, ago. Right. I, I, I have to check and see what, uh, what level of uh, efficiency yeah. we've performed at at this point. Right. Um, I recently got a call from Tony Marino here of Burlington, and he runs a charity called Vets for Vets. It's core vets that they raise money for veterans. And they had a run, as they call it. They had uh, all these Corvettes line up up at the uh, Marriott and Bill Ricca up on Route 3, and they were going to parade to the Bedford VA Hospital. Mm -hmm. And they raised, they actually raised $70,000 for the VA. That was a great thing. But he called me and said, can you fly your drone over all 600 cars as they come out of the parking lot up in Bill Ricca and they head for Bedford? And that's what I did. I made a 25-minute video of all 600 cars cool. coming out of that. Now, that Very was one of the cool. most easy. And that, that's not considered a commercial because it's a donation. I didn't, I'm not charging them right, for anything. Right. It's both, it's uh, experience it's, for me. And your time. And it's, and it's my time. And it's a Sunday right. morning. It's no big deal. And right. for the veterans, I'd do anything. It doesn't, right. you know. But uh, that was a great experience. And that was just recently. Great. So uh, so what are some of the most memorable events that have occurred to you uh, that you've attended? Uh, or, well, uh, local or, or wherever? In general. In, in to general. Joe Brown Digital um, Photography. So... I got to drive a nuclear-powered submarine off the coast of Florida for eight hours one night. Very cool. I am. Of course, a, the whole uh, world was holding their breath. While yeah, well, Joe exactly. Was see what happened. Control. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See what happened. That was a uh, that was a week on a, on the USS Providence that uh -huh. uh, we did a news we did some news writing and photos on. Um, I spent a week on the um, the USS Teddy Roosevelt, which is a uh, uh, was a conventional uh, aircraft carrier, Air carrier sure. and I landed on it, and we were shot off the other end. It was one of the greatest oh, man, there. We, all, yeah, me and Jim, Hag Jim Haggy and I did it yeah, as, on uh, the catapult on shoot. The, we what? did the catapult shoot. Yeah, we did the whole. Yeah. What kind of a of a craft was the it? The COD, the carrier on board delivery plane. Yeah, okay, so, which was really awesome. <laughs> um, Is it as bad as they say? It was a controlled car crash. It really was. That's the only <laughs> way I can phrase it when, yeah, when, when really. we landed. Yeah. And the Navy has, well, they didn't. I don't know if they knew it still good. So that was 10 or 11 years ago. Anyway, they have your face backwards on the plane. So we had two tons of canned goods. We had two tons of mail and 14 passengers that particular day. On we the shoot or on, on the, the catch? On the catch when we landed. Okay. So we flew out of Norfolk. So we, yeah. we met the Navy at Norfolk Air Force, and then we went out from there. Mm -hmm. We were 125-something miles off the coast of Virginia. And it was a big exercise. There were 50 boats out there, 50, yeah, 50 yeah. ships. And uh, but well, when we landed, it must look like something so from the uh, from the air. It was. It was. It was amazing. Yeah. It really was. Yeah. There's only two windows on the cod though, because it's a it's a really a freighter. Freighter. So yeah, it's not sure. really it's not really designed for people, but the people when they do, we sat backwards. And never forget when the when the tail went down like this, and on the aircraft carrier, everybody wears a particular color to denote what their job right. is. Yeah. And it was just a rainbow of of guys, and there was steam, and you could see the ocean, and and you know the the carriers going up and down, and it was just a surreal experience. <laughs> yeah. Basically, we're sitting in the dark. Right. You know, we're looking out at that. And, and you got and the landing was, officer and going. And, and they're trying to get it right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, they're trying to get us right. So, uh, so that was great. That was a wonderful weekend. Uh, wonderful weekend. So uh, I used to travel with the um, Mass National Guard out to Fort Drum in Watertown, New York. Oh, yeah. They used to do their and, maneuvers uh, out there, the right? The 273rd Chemical Company used to be on Main Street in Woburn. And they were a chemical company. So they were nuclear, biological, and chemical warfare. And we'd go out and train with them. We'd spend a day. We'd spend two days. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll never forget the first time I went out there was with Marianne Brenton and Carol Donovan. Now, Marianne Both was state, the state, state rep. Senator? State no, se state rep. State, state right, rep. Right. So yeah. thinking we're talking 88, 87, right. 88. So we went out there. Now, what was Carol Donovan at the time? She, she was a state rep. She was oh, a state rep. Oh, it was rep. two different she districts. Was yes, she yes, was yes. Woburn state rep. Right, exactly. So this was a military trip that involved local politicians. Right. So, so Marianne was there, and Carol, myself, Jim Haggerty, there were probably 25 of us all local people. So <laughs> yet there was some hotshot helicopter pilot. We got off the plane, and they said, we're going to give you an aerial tour of Fort Drum. And we all jumped in the, in the, uh, the UEs. Yeah, so they had sure. three or four of them ready for us. There were six people to each UE. And this guy went over basically sideways. And I still remember Marianne and Carol screaming at the top of the hill. <laughs> we, this guy was like, he like was kind a of carnival a hot ride. Shot. Yeah. yeah, he was kind of a hot shot pilot. And, and we had a lot of fun. It was a very enjoyable. Uh, yeah. the, the local, I can't remember his name, but the local general was a, a Woburn guy or somewhere local. Uh -huh. And we did a bunch of stories on him. So it was a, it was a lot of fun. So uh -huh. those are trips that I've got to do. Um, 
they've just I've got so many stories I could tell you I could tell you all kinds of stuff yeah. I've done the weddings are wonderful I've done a bunch of a bunch of weddings over the years then every wedding is different yeah. well yeah. let's get into the cultural side here and talk a little bit about before we get into your pictures actually quickly yes the print media it's declining dramatically but it, it hasn't really affected your business actually the digital opportunities would seem greater it's not, yeah, it's not completely affecting me. Uh -huh. uh, it is in the fact that I'm not getting as many assignments. On the print on side. The, on the print side, yeah. Right. Um, and some but of the other aren't people. Aren't there as many digital outlets for? Well, that's what I was print? gonna say, yeah. So right. I'm not getting as many print assignments, but we're still getting digital assignments. Okay. Um, and it's also changed all of the deadlines. That's the big thing with print, more for me, that affects me more, right. is that everyone wants it, the minute you've got it in the camera, they want it sent in. Right. <laughs> so, and you could do and, and that now. I could do it from right? the front seat of the car. Right. Yeah. My cameras talk to my iPhone or my computer, my laptop, directly, wirelessly. Maybe that's the new Nikon cameras that I have that they'll talk, and uh, I can send everything right in. One picture, two right. pictures, a dozen. Doesn't matter. Right. So, All right. Let's talk about this picture right here. Right. If you could, yeah, get the okay. camera on me while grab, Joe reaches over. Want to grab the, yep. Gra okay. Grab that one. Let's talk a little bit about the technology of photography here. All right. This is, uh, can we bring that up actually? There it is here. Here it is here. Oh, there it is. There okay, it is. good. Okay. All right. So one of the things that, that digital has made a huge difference in is, uh, and the internet in itself, is that not only can we take the pictures, but we can output the pictures in all kinds of medium now. You can have wood, you can have glass, you can have metal. You can have any kind of paper you want, glossy, matte. Uh, pro, uh, the, the, it's amazing, the The format is endless. The format is. So this is a picture. Of these young ladies are from the Wilmington High School girls soccer team. This is a couple of years ago at the Burlington Mall. It's the, called the Color Run, where they run a 5K in the mall parking lot, and people throw. This is a mixture of cornstarch, flour, <laughs> and they throw all the color. At them. At them as they at run them by. As they run by. <laughs> yeah. And they get Sounds bags of it. It's a fundraiser. <laughs> yeah. so. But what I, the reason I brought this, and I was tell, telling Phil earlier, is that this is aluminum. You can hear it. It's a, this is an amazing kind of technology that we can print. It'll never scratch. It'll never do fingerprints. As far as I know, it won't fade. I've only had this a couple of years. And it's very glossy. I don't know if the camera can pick yeah. up how glossy yeah. it really is, Looking but it's a beautiful picture. And this is one of the joys that we have now. Now I can offer a customer any format. If you call me and say, you did my wedding, I want a picture for my wall. So I can say, well, what do you want? You want to print it on wood? Format. You want to print yeah. it on a, on, on a piece of aluminum? Yeah. You want to print it on whatever. Right. It's amazing how we can do it. Yeah. So it's opened up the market for me in that sense is huge because right. now you can offer all the stuff. And I don't have to keep this in stock. No, there's a companies sure. out there, there companies everywhere now that do all this. And all you have and to all do is, is place the order. Right. And you go online and you send the, you send the file into them. So, um, okay, let's have but, our director roll down one of the them. next photo. So, Click, there we go. Click. Which one is this? So this is just, uh, I just picked some of my favorites. Um, this is a, the first burial ground in Woburn. And um, this picture has actually won a bunch of awards for just, just I don't know why. <laughs> People seem to like it. So in that burial ground, it's from the 1600s. It's one mm -hmm. of the earliest burial grounds in the area. And this is actually a footstone. This is not a headstone oh. back then. And that, that um, cemetery is noted for its footstones. Right. Does Susanna so, Richardson have any, so, any significance no, in Woburn history? No, Richardson's a big Woburn name. Oh, it is. It is, yeah. Okay. And you were actually able to read that. A lot of people can't read that headstone, that footstone. Well, so because that, the S's are the F's. F's yeah, are, right. they that, <laughs> the first S in the word yeah. was that was made that way. Right, so, right. Um, but this is just one of these that I, I like. It just um, it was taken with a super telephoto lens, so that's why the background is all right. completely right. out of focus. focus. And even the foreground is, the focus is just sharp just, on the uh, stone. Right. So. Okay, next. This one so, we know. This one we know. Uh, it's, it it kind of loses a little bit on the screen here, but um, I traveled to South Carolina for the eclipse this past August. And actually, it was a fluke. It was a family vacation. We were vacationing in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> and it just happened to occur at the same we, time. We figured out that it was going to occur. We didn't actually know. My wife made the arrangements a year ago to go to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> and uh, somebody said, you know, totality is only 32 miles south of Myrtle Beach. And I said, no, that's, no, you know, couldn't be my luck. <laughs> Coincidentally. Well, sure enough, it was. So Great. I drove to a place called Georgetown, South Carolina, 32 miles south of um, Myrtle Beach, and was welcomed with open arms. It was really crazy. Um, the, pulled into a huge parking lot, held about 6,000 cars, and it was empty except for four people. 
So I pulled up to them and I said, excuse me, uh, can we watch the eclipse from here? You know, we're, we're right on totality. And the woman looked at me and said, you all drive down from Massachusetts for this? And I said, yes, ma'am. six minutes, I said, right? yes, yes, ma'am, I did. And she said, you all got to join us. So I, I hung out with them. Uh, it was like a tailgate party. It was Good. huge. If you want to go to the next um, eclipse photo, there is a second one of the corona. Yeah, that's the this corona. One's a little, this yeah. is the corona. Uh, you won't be able to see it, but in the actual picture, you can actually see some of the planets, which is one of the things that um, they had said when it got that dark. And you were taking pictures. You might you be could able actually to see. It's like yeah, you, yeah, you won't well, be able I can to see, it here. see them. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. a little bit. Yeah, there's Mars. Uh, there was Mars and Venus. The yeah. Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn, I believe, were visible, mm -hmm. and it was an amazing thing. This was mm -hmm. one of the. This is, and I will do this again in, in a few years when it comes back to New England. <laughs> this is, will be in New England. So, <laughs> give us another if you would. So, this is one of the first fires I covered ever. This is a, ended up going to four alarms. It this was is on Wind Street, fire. isn't it? This is exactly. This yeah. is one of this was 1987. I remember this, this is, picture. Um, this is that block of stores. I think it has um, Domino's. Uh, Domino's is, is now here. Sammy's would Sammy's. be. Sammy's would be up here. Right. And this this is New England Fountain was there for years. Right. Um, right. And this is just Delicious one of the new desserts would have Delicious been right here. Delicious desserts would have been the next yeah, one down. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, but this is just one of those photos that that uh, drew a lot of interest. It was one of the first fires I covered. And you'll notice one thing that we talk about a lot is that there's no yellow tape. I had free access. Uh -huh. Nowadays, yeah. they immediately put up the yellow tape. They don't want the crime scene has to be preserved. The fire scene has to be preserved. Right. Nobody can get too close. And that's right. a safety thing also. Right. So but they this still let you in with your credential, they, right? Not necessarily. No. They sometimes keep you out. Uh -huh. Sometimes keep you out. Really? Um, I have a friend who's a three-time Pulitzer Prize winning photographer. He works for Channel 5 TV right now. And he wrote a book. And his book is called before yellow tape. tape really yeah <laughs> so that's an amazing he's got some yeah. the pictures he has are amazing um, well, he's been doing it a lot longer than i've been doing. understand now so all well, exactly but that's how yeah. this whole thing has evolved now yeah. i would never be able to do this now yeah because i was too close yeah well you know? with the technology so, that you have you can look like you're right next you well exactly right that's just the it. Fire, now right? now yeah, yeah. right right <laughs> so but that i just threw that in there just again that's one of the first fires we did the first digital fire we did was bond shoe on main street in woburn it was the first fire that I had a fully digital camera, and I took the memory card out of the camera, and they sent a runner from the newspaper. I handed it back to him. He went down, brought it back down to Arrow Drive. We were in the industrial park, and the paper had fire photos before the, the fire, fire was out. out. Yeah. And that was the first digital foray, and it kind of woke everybody up like, wow, this is going to be a game changer. If we can do this, if we can, have, if we can turn stuff around like this. Right. And nobody else had it because we had the afternoon paper. Right. So nobody right. else had that. The Globe, the Hill didn't had to have it the next day. Right. So <laughs> this yeah. was made, it was kind of big doings. Definitely, back then, definitely you know? technology and leap. So, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Next, please. This is a beauty. I love this one. Well, this thank is you Woburn very much. Center. This is yeah. Woburn Center. Yeah. Um, and I'll ask you: Do we have enough time? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. Where do you think I was standing when I took this photo? Ah, uh, let me see. Where would you be standing? You would be standing on the Winchester. No, on top of the Woburn Times building. No, nice try. No, but no. So what was it? I'm a birder. I like I like chasing uh, me birds. Me too. Okay. <laughs> and I had been told that on the top of what we call Horn Pond Mountain, behind the New England Rehab on Cambridge Road, that there had been some snow bunting seen. And I love snow buntings. They're the cute little bird. So I climbed up to the top of the hill with all my camera gear, my super telephoto lenses and everything. Didn't find a single bird. Yeah. <laughs> but I turned and looked, and this is what I saw. Yeah. So um, this is about eight, eight years ago, seven or eight years ago that I took this photo. It has been my absolute number one uh, in sales and in popularity. This, this is, has this been is the number one. Number one right. uh, close tie to, um, I have a picture of the USS Constitution that we'll see in we'll a minute. We'll show that, yeah. Um, sure. And those, the, that's a yeah. very close tie. Well, you mentioned but, the snow bunting. But, I, I've been looking for an indigo bunting for like 30 years. And the, so my, my daughter sends me a picture of one on her bird feeder, and I'd never seen one before. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, so the, another rare photo. Yeah, right. But everybody kind of likes just the, the progression from warm to cold. Yeah. And this is Stoneham in the background. As you can't, might not be able to see it, but there's a water tank back there yeah, that's I easily identifiable. Here, yeah. As, and this was really just a fluke. It was not, yeah. that was not the intention to go, um, but this has been awesome. Yeah. The church itself has been giving this as a gift to pastors as they move through. Mm -hmm. So several yeah. of the pastors have gotten this. It's on the wall in the church itself. And uh, it turned out just to be, I love it's it. Perfect, I, just, yeah. I just love it. It's one yeah. of those almost quintessential New England, New England kind photos. Of, that's uh, for sure. Church you know, and foliage. And, and as we know, this church is 197 feet tall. Yeah. And it was the first church of Woburn that was founded. Yeah. This building isn't from the 1600s. This building's from the 1800s, but it was the first, the first church. church. So, Okay. And what do we have? Here it is. Okay. Here's the Constitution. Yeah. This is. Uh, 
This is your money maker. Your this was the big maker? one. This was the okay. big one. Yeah. Tell us um, the story. So this story is basically an, a, both an internet success story and a, uh, I guess I'd call it a financial success story. I wasn't looking for anything for it, but um, so I got hired by the Salem News to work. Uh, this is the Constitution, 1997, off the coast of Marblehead. So I had been taking pictures for 10 years and had gotten my name out. And uh, the Salem News called me and hired me for the weekend. I was on the USS Halliburton, which is a frigate. Now, there were two ships that escorted the Constitution out of Boston Harbor. Up to Salem. Uh, up to right, Salem. Right. It yeah. spent the night in Marblehead. We went back to Boston because they didn't have enough berthing space in Marblehead right. for two huge sure. you know, right. <laughs> military yeah. ships. Um, so the next morning, I'd meet the ship in Boston. I actually went home that night, came home, and uh, developed the, this is on color negative film. So developed the film, got it to the Salem News. They use this in their paper. This was a front page photo in the paper for them because they had a week and a half of coverage because this, you know, they had all oh, kinds of, this was a big this deal. This was a huge sure. deal. Yeah. It really was. So uh, this photo uh, was taken from the stern. We were ahead. The tugboat would have been up here. There was a tugboat that was towing it. You can see a little bit of the rope. Yeah, they here. didn't sail it up uh, there. They didn't officially <laughs> sail it until it was they, the right. weather was perfect and right. there were a lot of things going on. You can see a lot of the guys in the rigging. They were setting sails at this point. Um, this is this is one of my favorite all time favorites. So about six months after this all happened. Well, well, give us the significance of the helicopter. Yeah, well, that's what, yeah, well. right. Yeah, okay. So these are these are military. These are um, they're called sea sprites. They're a pair of military U.S. Navy helicopters that were on patrol. Uh, on guard, if you will, and um, they had spent the whole weekend there too. So uh, one of them came from each of the ships. So one of these came from the Halliburton, and I can't remember the other name of the, the other destroyer that was with us. So I was on a fast frigate, and there was a destroyer. So they each will, will land on the ship at the end of the day. So that mm -hmm. was uh, pretty cool. But um, so six months later, the manufacturer of the helicopter called me, and they said, uh, "We need a copy of your photo." I said, "Which photo are you talking about?" They said, "The one that was on the Salem News," and I said. Uh, I said, okay, we could do that. Send me 25 bucks, and I'll be happy to send you a send copy of it. Copy. An 8 by 10, you know, <laughs> postpaid, 8 by 10. Yeah, right. nine, yeah. So uh, they said, uh, no, 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 you don't understand. We want to own the photo. Own the copyright. And I said, the copyright? Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. uh, and I've never had that. And I said, well, God, you're talking like $20,000. And the guy offered me 10. And I took it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no fool. No, I right. could have maybe argued more for 15 or whatever. Yeah, but you know it's what? college it was, money. It was Put a little exactly, college it money. Was, it was, yeah. yeah. So, um, again, being film, I took and I, uh, I cut the negatives. So I cut that one strip, one, one frame of film out. And I taped it to a piece of you know, plastic and put it in cardboard, and I FedExed to them. And sure enough, the next day, they FedExed me overnight a check for $10,000. Really? Yeah. Did, this now, is the first and only time I've ever sold the copyright to the photo. That's did, never happened before. Did they send you a copyright agreement with that? I mean, how does that actually work? Uh, it, was a, it was a verbal agreement more right, than anything. Right. Um, there was some paperwork, but it, right. it, uh, it didn't matter to me. No, it didn't. Point. I was it a, didn't. still, you know, only 10 years and uh, really? still kind of a young green photographer. Yeah. Uh, you know, 10 grand is 10 grand. All right. That's, that's a lot, right. Now, that's trace, a lot of money. trace so, its, uh, its journey. Well, that's just it. So I asked the guy, how did you find me? And he said, well, we went on Alta Vista. Which the was old the digital old equipment. Digital yeah. equipment, web, you know, that was the, that was the uh, search engine of, of favor back then. That the original was, one, we, The original, right? right, right. Yeah. And he said, we found Wooden Boat Journal's website. Now, that's a magazine that's been going on. That's been a lot around for years. He said, inside their website was a link to the Salem News website that had your name on the photo, but we didn't know if you had a website. So we called the Salem News, and they said, oh, yeah, Go to Joe Brown photo. It might have been. I don't remember what the website. My original website was. It might have been just Joe Brown photo or whatever it was. And uh, so they found it on the website, but I did had not made it available for purchase. So they called me, and that's when. That's how the whole thing. So it was yeah. first internet. You know, we were talking uh, 1997. So the internet was in its complete infancy. infancy sure. And this was kind of an internet success story, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. For you, absolutely. For me. So yeah. um, the picture that you see is actually part of a poster. And um, what the command company did out of, out of Connecticut is they made a whole ad campaign out of this photo. Calendars, coffee mugs, posters, keychains. Swag. All, swag. Yeah, swag. Swag. In, a, in, the, <laughs> in the big way. And um, I was telling Phil, six months or so after this picture was taken and the deal was done, I got a huge box to the front door of my house. And I got all that stuff. All I, got the, stuff. I got the coffee mugs and I got the calendars. And I, got the, I only got three copies of the poster. Um, the rest of the posters, and they printed thousands of them, 
were distributed at the Asian Military Hardware Show in Kuala Lumpur, <laughs> Malaysia. So somewhere over in Asia, somewhere on some wall at a military base, is a Joe, Joe Brown, Brown photo. photo. <laughs> crazy. It's just, you know, just stupidly crazy. But let's do so, another one. Is there another one there? Is there another uh, one up there? So, yeah. Okay. This is a Wuben. We will forgive you. Wuben, we'll forgive sorry. you for bringing a Wuben. My Wuben apologies, photo. <laughs> but this is uh, this is another one that's been very popular. I've won a few awards. I'm not big into awards. I don't enter a lot of contests. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that right now mm. I just you know occasionally I will yeah. uh, but not but this one everybody said you got to enter this you got to enter this so um, this is several years ago this was at the Boston Garden it was a championship game it's Woburn versus St. Mary's of Lynn and St. Mary's is a huge hockey they, they are one of the, the premier girls hockey programs and this just got the save it's hard to tell oh yeah no puck, I can see the, the puck, puck is in, yeah. the, in the glove and this game went on forever, a couple of overtimes, as I recall. So That's your classic stick split and save. Split right? save, yep. She's now an assistant coach with Woburn High School at this point. I bet she's, and, got, a, um, she's got a frame so, of that, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Her parents loved it. Every, everybody loved it. She's, come, right. she's from a big family, and uh, she's, she's really uh, great to me. They're all, they're, they love me. I guess. <laughs> so now how many shots did it take you to get something of that quality? So that's, in this camera was probably only six frames a second, so maybe 12 photo photos, a, a right. burst. A burst. A burst, as we would call it. Right. So um, the current camera that I use is 11 frames a second, so mm. when I'm doing, you know, football and whatever, if I got the kid running towards me, it's just press it and hold. Okay. So, and and that's a burst. technology, that's, a, that's a, a different kind of technology. In the, in the days when we first started, you could only take X number of photos, and that photo that number was very low, because it had to write the pictures to the memory card. And then we call that a bus. That was a very slow bus from the, from the sensor to the memory card was a single lane bus. Mm -hmm. Now, sensors are cut in half. They've got double buses going, so it writes to the memory card twice as fast. fast. Sure. So now I can almost double the number of pictures I can take. Right. So this is 11 frames a second, and everything is being pumped to the memory yeah. card. And this is RAM, as right? So as the RAM is faster. Well, than um, it's basically a RAM. Yeah, they're yeah. the SD cards, the, the yeah, little, sure. little SD cards. Or yeah. in the, the old days, we had CF cards, which were the size of matchbooks, mm -hmm. so they were a little bit bigger. Yeah, right. But now, now, we, got now the all the cameras use the SIM card. So the, like it's, the like SIM it's like a SIM card. Yeah, yeah a little bit bigger right, than that. Right. And now we have a new thing called an XQD card that uh, my cameras use this. It's um, made by Sony, and it's, un it's blazing fast. I, mm -hmm. I, can't, I almost don't have the picture completely taken before it's already written to the memory card. It's just crazy the okay. way that it's just, just crazy. Wow. So okay, if we get another one? Do we have another one? We only have, what, we have enough time? There we go. Okay. Well, 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 that's the original one. Yeah. So, okay. You know. All right, but so what's the plan? A, You're going to continue a, to plan? I'll continue doing this, at quote, unquote, as long as someone writes me a check. <laughs> <laughs> and even I, then, I'm sure I you think, might I think be that taking bird pictures. Um, there's a future still with digital news and yeah. Facebook and Twitter still yeah. are going to be there. And um, I think it's something that you gotta, we really got to pay attention to. As you say, you know, and I, I don't mean this as a diss to anybody, but where a newspaper is going to be in five years. Right. You know, yeah. is it everything going to be online? Are we going to actually have a physical? I hope that they never go away. I, well, and that's not self-preservation either. Right. That's just, I hope that, you know, we always have something uh -huh. to pick up and hold. Well, I'm hoping there's a renaissance from the from the standpoint of the local coverage. You right. know, you, you remember years ago who we had in here. I mean, Absolutely. Peter Kent and Freddie and, and, and John everybody. Heineman right. and Liz Banks and, right. and all of that, you know, 9, 10, 11 people that were covering Burlington on right. a daily basis. And now, you know, you have a couple. So right. I, I think... If you uh, even have anybody. If you have anybody. And that's part of it, too. Yeah, you know? that's part I know of some it. of the newspapers now will get the, the videotapes from here. And, and, right. and have somebody sitting in an office on a Monday morning right. looking at your last Thursday night. Right. You know, right. not necessarily and we're trying to at, fill that void. Not being, yeah, not necessarily being at the meetings. Right. Yeah. You know, and that was a big thing. Yeah. Me and, is trying uh, to fill that void, but still, I mean, uh, you know, when you're sourcing from one place, you know, you don't get that variety of, of opinion that you would have gotten yeah. from people who are pros who are, who are here for so many years. Right. Yeah, it's just so different. It really is. Yeah. But uh, So tell us uh, about your website so we can get a plug in for you. All right, Joe Brown Photos with an S dot com. And everything I shoot and everything I do basically goes there. It's uh, available to look at and to, uh, uh, to, dare I say, purchase. Got an but, order uh, form right on it's, there. Uh, it's all on there, yeah. 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 Believe it or not, um, and I, I never will get rich on the website. That's not the intention. The intention is more convenience. I, get, I have a 99 cent Facebook uh, download. You get it instantly. You go on the line, you, 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 you pay for it, and you get it instantly. And I sell them by the dozens. And you can print, can you print off of your... You cannot print that size. It's too small. It's but, too small. But most people aren't printing. 
Right. They're well, just putting it in their archive. The, they're putting it either on their phone, right. on their Twitter, or mostly on their Facebook. Right. That's the way of the world. Right. Now, it how really do you uh, how you get your remittance through PayPal or credit through card? PayPal. PayPal. Yep. Through PayPal. It's an on-demand thing. I have an account with this. I use an online company called Zenfolio, and there's a lot of different companies that do this. I upload every night or every other night or on demand. When I want to upload the photos, create a folder on their distant computer, upload the pictures. Be it one picture or a hundred pictures, it doesn't matter. And then um, I'll send out a tweet to tell the parents that the pictures are there. And they so go to Dropbox? Burlington Volleyball. It could be Burlington whatever. And they go on to JoeBrownPhotos.com. They can navigate through the, the, to what sport they are because I have everything separated by sports and by non-news event. So if you know it was the Selectman's meeting or if it was, a, like say, volleyball or Burlington football or whatever, uh, find the game that you want. Then you can, go, you can see the whole shoot, whatever I took. Could it be 200 photos? It could be 1,700 photos. photos. It doesn't matter. Right. And you can go through and you can find what you're looking for. So Everything even if your kid wasn't in the paper, this is again another one of those joys of digital photography right. is I take pictures along the sideline. You take pictures of the coach. Right. You take pictures of the cheerleaders. You take pictures of the band. You take pictures of everything. The spectators. The so spectators. mom and dad want to be in there. Right? Mom and dad want to say, hey, I actually did go to that game. Look at <laughs> it. I got proof. Photoshop me onto the field. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so, okay. so that's how that works. And, and people love the Facebook ones. So. Right. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I'd like to thank our guest. Uh, 30-year anniversary of Joe Brown oh, so Digital Photography. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thank you. great job. Uh, certainly a familiar face around Burlington. Well, Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. And you were one of the first people I met way <laughs> yeah, back in the day. Way back. Way back in the day when I started this. Cub you know? photographer. Again, cub politician. Cub politician. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Okay. But. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Good evening.